back into the backup playing, you know us too, but you don't know him, Julio Gallabrati in up? studio. All right, my man, uh, you have the unique ability to, mi to mix comedy, <laughs> philanthropy, and massive tennis fandom right. all into one amazing person who's in studio. Oh, thanks, man. How? So I don't know. I don't know that I've successfully combined those three things. Actually, I like just sort of like do them at the same time, <laughs> separately. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know where to start. I mean, tennis. Glad that the tennis season is back. Uh, they're doing this thing called the United Cup, which is sort of like difficult to follow. I don't, I don't even really fully understand the format. I think it's like. One, like men's singles, women's singles, men's doubles, women's doubles, mixed doubles, maybe. And then countries. And they play yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. And it's countries playing against each other. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool event. It's like doing Davis Cup better than Davis Cup did itself. Uh, so I've been trying to follow along with that. Obviously, it's like for the Australian Open. That's going to be dope. Um, I'm a comedian. I do stand-up. I've been doing it for you know, over a decade, running around the country, doing shows, doing shows here in New York. And then uh, the philanthropy stuff, I mean, that's sort of new to me. I kind of stumbled on that when I was in Afghanistan like a few weeks ago. Uh, and I started sort of a, a school over there, yeah. um, not meaning to do it. I just kind of got there and things fell into place and it was sort of easy to do, which mm -hmm. sounds crazy. So I was like, why would I not do this? I would be like kind of a bad dude if I didn't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's up and running and it's a thing. So crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, well, we I'm, want to talk about all of I'm this. I'm sure there's a lot of questions starting, for that, but <laughs> listen. Yeah. Starting with the comedy world, though, uh, Pete Davidson and Friends. Let's just mm -hmm. talk about that. You were, from my understanding, you were picked by him out of a group of comedians. Mm -hmm. You know, he wanted to put the spotlight on you. What was that experience like? Oh, it was really nice. I mean, he is like a really, like an old pal. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the people on that special are just like sort mm -hmm. of his old friends. Uh, and he's pretty cool like that, like the type of guy who really sticks his neck out for his friends. You know what I mean? Like, I, to be honest, I didn't have like a ton of stand-up accolades like going into doing that. And if it had been left up to some producer or something, like I might not have been in it, you know what I mean? But he's like, nope, I'm putting my boys in it. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and girl, Carly's in it as well. Um, so yeah, so that was really cool. It was really fun to do. Um, always a pleasure to be sort of like riding his gust. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm pr proud of him. It's incredible how successful he's become. And uh, I'm grateful to sort of be in the same sentence occasionally or <laughs> just kind of get to reap some of the, the benefits of, of his hard work. And also, you know, it's not like we haven't all been busting it for, for years also. So uh, I'm grateful to have done it. I'm not saying I like didn't deserve it. Like I'm right, happy to right, be there. I, I want, yeah. like, you know, I think I was ready for it. Um, but it was really cool to get the look. It's cool that there's like a circle of comedians that look out for each other. Like it's cool just knowing that, you know, being in New York, it, it just seems like there's sort of like a brotherhood sisterhood type thing when it totally. comes to that which is great and the thing that's cool too like a guy like that you know he's we've all been doing it for many years we all knew each other when nobody had had anything going on you know and then it's hard to sort of replace those kind of friends i suspect i don't know because i've never like achieved his level of success yet but yeah, don't let me yourself I suspect, <laughs> I suspect that uh you know it becomes hard to replace those like day one friends who like liked you before you had something to give them, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's uh, so true. I, I, I want to follow up. You talk about, the obviously, the, the piece you did with Pete, but also comedy in Rwanda. Oh, that yeah. is a special you've done. Yeah. And once again, this kind of goes to, you, you, I know you're very meager and mild about it, but, like, doing comedy in Rwanda, right? Like, that's... Mm -hmm. That's a form of philanthropic work, but also putting uh, yourself out there. Oh, uh, I thought you were talking about Afghanistan initially. Sorry. Both. So, both. We'll get okay. to that too, but yeah. So the Rwanda stuff was cool. It, it wasn't... I wouldn't call it like philanthropic in nature necessarily. Like it was definitely a feel good piece. Um, I basically read some random article about these guys from Rwanda who, who had like a basically a stand up comedy circuit in Kigali and not expats, like people from Rwanda, you know. And I was like, oh, that's, that's like kind of random. Or is it? Like, I don't know. Is it? So I found the guys on Facebook and I hit them up and I was like, mm -hmm. yo, I would come over there. And they were like, all right, like we we're thinking about doing a festival. Like, do you, would you want to come and do it? And I was like, sure. And I sort of end up over there doing it, meeting these guys, becoming friends. I'm still pals with them. And it's funny because when I or when I messaged them, they were sort of like equally suspicious of me as I was of them. You know what I mean? Sort of like gave off the vibe of like, your uncle is leaving you $10 million. All you need to do is, they were like, is this dude like scamming us? Like they told me that later, which I thought was so funny. Um, and went over there, had a great time, just like did normal stuff. You know what I mean? Like. At the time I was single, I was like tindering, like, and they were sort of like helping me through it, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, just hanging out with the boys, like drinking, doing stand up, 
seeing the kind of differences in cultures, but also all the similarities. And it sort of like started me on the path of making videos like that. Mm -hmm. Not always comedy centric, but in general. So it's been really cool. And that's on my Instagram if you want to check it out. It's like pinned. My, my profile's not at not Julio. What is it about uh, the comedy specifically? Because you've, you've used it to go to Rwanda, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, sort of. Like, I, I, I used it to, like, I didn't do comedy in mm -hmm. Afghanistan or Iraq, but, like, I'm making videos that I think are funny. Mm -hmm. Where, like, I'm being funny, I'm editing the things that are funny, I do most of the post production myself. And I think that is a little unique because it's usually travel shows or, like, adventure people who are, like, you know, adventure-y, but they're, like, not always funny. Or it's sort of, like, a little, like, boring yeah. sometimes, I find. I don't know, personally. So I'm trying to kind of, like, uh, use my unique point of view to make something f interesting and fun to watch. But that's also, like, very much respectful of the culture and, like, you can learn a lot, too, you know? Right. I mean, you definitely travel to, like, a handful of places from all over the world. What... What is why do you think that that story is so important to tell? Like why why do you find these places and decide okay this is the story I'm going to tell and this is the platform I'm going to give them? I love that question. That's a great question. I think that is the most important thing. It's like the idea that we are afraid of places mm -hmm. for good reason a lot of the time. But like if you pick apart the fear and like the reality of that and what like people are actually scared of you realize that there really is not that much to be afraid of, even going to places like that, as crazy as that might sound. It's really not that fearful of an experience. I guess Afghanistan maybe has like an added layer now with like the new government and stuff, which is, you know, not necessarily ideal for a traveler or in general. But but still, even with that, it's never as scary as you think it's going to be, ever. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important to show people the like 90% good side of, place, of every place. Not all, you know what I mean? Like, there's nowhere on earth where you walk outside and get hit by a bomb immediately. That is not a thing anywhere on the planet. So like, it's, it's interesting to me to go and see places for what they are and what they don't show you. I don't want to say what they don't show you on the news. Like obviously the news is showing you like or It's the like important sometimes what they don't show you in Hollywood. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. to me, it's like, oh, like these, these are places that have such famous reputations, infamous reputations for certain stuff a lot of the time. Let's go show the mundane, boring, quote, boring everyday life stuff about just like chilling and like you know what i mean that is to me is super interesting in a place that no one ever shows that's you that that's so cool and i had to ask is there a place that you haven't been to yet that you really want to visit and give some sort of the same you know the same platform to that's a great question i mean as far from a video perspective it's hard to say i kind of need to do like a full deep dive because there usually is like a perfect place that presents itself and i'm like ooh, that would be great yeah mm -hmm. um but like you could guess pretty easily, I think, just like based on anywhere that you've heard of that has sort of a bad reputation is, is immediately to the top of the list for that sort of stuff, at least. Like, mm -hmm. I put Rwanda in a separate category for that. I think the Iraq and Afghanistan theme is about that, like places you can go right. as opposed to like places you cannot go. You know what I mean? Rwanda wasn't really like that, but like the theme is still there with Rwanda. Like, people know it for the genocide and stuff. And in America, then they saw Hotel Rwanda. And from there, like, we don't hear a ton about it in the news, you know? And the reality is, it's like, a pop in place, you know right. what I mean? That's like, or like Haiti, everyone knows them, they associate them with the earthquake, but it's yeah. like, no, there's actually life outside of that. I, I totally. think that's fantastic. Yeah, Haiti, I would say, is a good one too. Um, and then I have a bunch of other like, little different ideas. It's all, mm -hmm. it all kind of stemmed from uh, a sort of thirst for travel and mm -hmm. like not being able to do it without having a good excuse. So, like, my friends and family, like, specifically girlfriend, parents, like, would never have accepted where I was going if I didn't act like it was for some sort of work-related thing, right. even though it's all self-funded <laughs> and, like, I'm not making any money doing it, realistically, at the moment. I'd like that to change. Uh, but I usually just lie to my parents about where I am. And then when I get back, I tell them, I'm like, I'm a grown man. Like, I don't need to tell you where I am. <laughs> Mom's calling to check in and say, don't get on the plane. I picture just that being location. hilarious. All right, we have a couple minutes left. We're going to get back. Uh, first off. Great, great discussion about all the places and just exposing other people to the world. I think that's impressive. Uh, but we're going to get back to sports yeah, because you, you touched on the United Cup, which is going on now in Australia. Um, Rafa Nadal not a fan. Let's just be honest. He was quite critical of it. Mm -hmm. uh, your tennis fandom, where does it lie as far as which player? Mm -hmm. And is Rafa wrong? To be critical of uh, the United Cup. He had some mixed reactions. So what did he say? Do you guys know specifically? I don't know what exactly what he it? said. His, his reactions were mixed, and he said he didn't like the format of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... He, I mean, he was losing a lot too. That never helps when you're losing. I mean, no, I mean, Rafa's a great competitor, great champion. I was always like a huge Federer fan personally. At the moment, I don't really have like a favorite player. I'm just watching people be awesome. Um, Nadal, 
sort of like took Federer down off of his pedestal, which like hurt me and like Federer <laughs> fans in general. But I think that most people have seen him over the years just be like an incredible competitor, like seems like a great dude, like can turn it off when he's off the court. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem like he needs to be like the center of attention. And like he's not, he doesn't have that like annoying narcissistic quality, it seems from a vibe perspective, which I like really appreciate. So like as much as it frustrates me that he's like unbeatable a lot of the time, I've really like grown to love him and respect him. Um, I feel like it, I'm happy that they're trying out new formats. Like I know that some version of the United Cup, they've been doing it the past couple of years and they've been playing around with it because team tennis is fun. It's just been hard for tennis to figure it out. Cause like mm -hmm. the Davis Cup is, I mentioned it before, it's like an ongoing year long countries playing each other thing. And it's n never really, I mean, back in the day it used to be popular. It just has not been popular for a while. It's like really hard to follow. In my opinion, the website is like, Absolutely atrocious. I have no idea. <laughs> I can't figure out what's going on. I'm like, guys, are you serious? No, you sound like a great player right now. What is this, this internet? This www. <laughs> dot. Um, so I like the idea of starting the year off with this format. I think it's nice for the players. You don't have to play a ton of matches. You can play and still be warm enough when you play the Australian Open without having to like play a ton of tournaments. Um, so to me, it's like a nice, fun way that isn't quite as physically demanding as maybe some other formats. To me, I find it interesting um and cool you know i'm sure maybe some of the players don't love it but if they can find something that would be great because like i said i don't even know i've been watching and i have no idea what the format is still <laughs> like i've been watching there is there's definitely some confusion around it so you can't knock him for saying something about it but alas this is this is the new system that's what you're just talking yeah. about so maybe that's what he's complaining about because like the score even like the score lines it'll be like netherlands defeats the u.s four three and then another match will be like two zero and it's like well why was that two zero and that one four three like right. is it not over I, it was like unclear maybe it's basically looking at uh, the website like maybe it's just as bad as looking at the website from from rafa's point of view right maybe that yeah rafa, <laughs> rafa i feel you on that i ride with you um you well know. thank you thank yeah. you so much for joining us but i really could like keep this conversation going yeah, yeah, i want to yeah, like i have so many more questions but <laughs> we will talk offline thank you so much yeah. for joining us today. it's a pleasure thanks for yeah, having Julio me Gallerati. make sure you check him out Comedy and Rwanda, hilarious. Yeah. We'll see you much more, much more. We'll see you right back. We have much more coming up <laughs> on the backup plan. You already got me flustered. It's got been all over the world. <laughs>